Welcome to this EHA group project. Your health, safety and well-being on this site is our number one priority. We would appreciate your full attention during this induction presentation. EHA Group is a full-service construction company dedicated to delivering high-quality projects built on time and to budget. Founded in 1990, EHA Group provides a complete service of planning, design and build, main contracting, civil engineering, property development and specialist joinery services. We work across the UK and Ireland with a team of 80 experts across many sectors including residential, social housing, commercial, hotel and student accommodation. EHA Group Management are committed to preventing accidents on site. Nothing we do is more important than ensuring the health, safety and well-being of personnel on site and the general public. We appreciate that you may have been inducted many times before, but ours is a dangerous industry. A constant focus on health and safety is the only way to ensure we all go home at the end of the day in the same way we started it. This short video will show you what we need from you while you're on our site. Access will vary depending on the size and nature of the site or premises. The site manager will have explained this to you already or will do so at the end of this video. Whether the site is small, medium or large, it's essential we know who's here, so use the correct entrance and sign in and sign out whenever you enter or leave the site area. In the event of a fire or major incident, we'll need to tell enforcing authorities, such as the fire brigade, who is on site. This is a legal requirement, so please help us to comply with the relevant regulations and the Health and Safety at Work Act. We also need to keep the public and especially children out of the site. Report to the site manager if you spot anything hazardous, any trespassers or any damage to security equipment. That also means closing gates behind you and making sure the boundary fencing is secure. If possible, come to work by public transport. It's unlikely there will be on-site parking available, especially in town and city centres. If you do park nearby, don't upset local residents by taking their spaces or blocking their driveways. You're responsible for the safety and security of your own vehicle, and also for the secure storage of any tools and equipment. Your supervisor will give you guidance on this. You must book in any deliveries in advance with site management. Many of our sites have specific restrictions. Delivery times are limited for health, safety and security of other people in the area. Again, your supervisor will give you guidance. No one will be allowed on site without the correct personal protective equipment or PPE. Your supervisor will have detailed in your safe system of work exactly what PPE you need. Always wear it. Tell the site manager if you see anybody not wearing theirs. If you do, your confidentiality will be respected and you may prevent serious injury to a work colleague. The basic minimum is hard hat, high vis, gloves and safety boots. Your risk assessment method statement will specify any additional PPE you may need, for example for hot work or for dusty work. Fire alarms vary from site to site. It may be a rotary bell, or air horn, or a klaxon. If you hear the fire alarm, leave immediately. Switch off any plant or equipment, but don't stop to collect your tools. If you're the one who discovers the fire, raise the alarm immediately. Don't try to put out the fire unless it's very small or you need to in order to escape you need to have been trained in the use of a fire extinguisher. Make sure you're not putting yourself or others at risk. Make your way to your assembly point and wait there for a roll call. Don't leave site or go back inside until you've been told it's safe to do so. All sites have trained first aiders. You need to know where to find them if you are hurt or taken ill on site. You should also know who your own company's first aiders are. 
report all accidents and near hits so they can be recorded and to prevent future incidents occurring. If you find something that's unsafe, an accident waiting to happen, get it fixed. Report it as a near hit so it doesn't happen again. We'll provide somewhere for you to eat and also toilets, drying rooms and other facilities. Wash your hands after using the toilet, when you finish work and especially before eating. Leave the washroom as you'd like to find it. In sunny weather, make sure you cover up and use protective creams. We need to know if you've been prescribed any medication by your doctor to make sure it won't make you drowsy, unhealthy or unsafe to work. If you get any ill effects from your work, for example, numbness when using a vibrating tool or pain from a repeated action, stop and discuss this with site management. Alcohol and drug abuse are forbidden. Smoking and vaping are only allowed in the designated area. Your employer must have agreed a risk assessment and method statement with us in advance. We'll need to be confident that you understand this and that you're fully equipped and trained to carry out the work as specified and that you'll follow the safe system of work. Hot work, confined spaces, dust or fumes, work at height and other hazardous activities will of course require a permit to work. Asbestos is a hazard in refurbishment and demolition work. We will have an asbestos register so you can check you're not working where you will be at risk. It's your responsibility to do this. If you're in any doubt whatsoever, don't start work until you've checked with the site manager or your supervisor. In a building where there is known to be asbestos, do not drill into or open up any structure without checking the register first. If you come across anything you think might be asbestos, stop work immediately. Keep everybody out of the area. Alert your site or contract manager or supervisor. Demolition work is particularly hazardous and brings with it increased risk from falling material, noise, dust, concealed services, to name a few. For that reason, any demolition is planned in minute detail and, if necessary, carried out by specialist contractors. It's essential that you stick to what's been arranged and finished by the agreed time, so there's no risk to other activities on the site. You can expect our managers to visit your workplace to make sure that everything is as it should be. Remember, this is for your own personal health and safety and for that of others who could be affected. Please cooperate with the site team. We'll also check that anyone operating plant or equipment has the appropriate qualifications. You can also expect a daily safety briefing about activities on site. Use these as a way of alerting the site management team on issues they may not be aware of and contribute in any way you can. Fuels and chemicals must be stored securely and safety data sheets provided. Consult the data sheet and COSH assessment to see what precautions to take and what PPE to wear. If there's a spill, use the appropriate spill kit and report the incident to site management. Ideally, workers and heavy plants will be kept separate. Where we provide marked walkways or walkways with barriers, use them. Safe access routes are put in place for everybody's health and safety, so always use them and report any defects or misuse to the site manager. If you need to pass close to heavy plant, make eye contact with the operator or banksman. Check that you're safe to go. Don't walk behind plant that could swing round or reverse into you. Only a trained person is allowed to direct or operate a crane. If you're the operator, once you've finished an operation, switch off and remove the key before you dismount. This stops any unauthorised use of the plant. It also cuts down the amount of noise and pollution on site. Whenever a large vehicle is reversing or coming on to a public road, it must be guided by a banksman. If there's a site speed limit, keep to it. Watch out for any overhead power cables. Touching these with a scaffold pole, for example, will result in death or multiple injuries. 
we will have checked the site for buried services, electricity, gas, water, or fiber optic cable. But on brownfield sites especially, pipes or cables may not be marked on the plans. If you uncover any services in the ground or in a wall or floor, stop immediately and get advice from site management. All your own equipment must run on 110 volts. And all the PAT test labels must be valid. There's a hierarchy of control for working at height. Avoid, prevent, minimize and last resort. You should avoid working at height as much as possible. For example, by pre-assembling edge protection at ground level. When you have to work at height, prevent a fall from occurring, perhaps by using an existing place of work that is already safe, such as a non-fragile roof with a permanent perimeter guardrail. Using work equipment to prevent people from falling, such as temporary or mobile platforms, scaffolding, mupes and so on. And using a work restraint or travel restriction system that prevents a worker getting into a fall position. If that's not possible, Minimize the distance and or consequences of a fall. When using ladders and step ladders, you must first be able to show that it is not reasonable to use other work equipment because the task is low risk and short duration. For ladders and step ladders, risk should be minimized through guidance, clear instruction, training and supervision. Before you go onto a scaffold, check the scaff tag. Green means you are good to go. But red means keep off. If you notice any defects in a scaffold, report them to the site manager. Only trained scaffolders are allowed to erect or alter a scaffold. Ladders must be clamped and require a permit. See the site manager about this. Unless specially designed as a work platform. Ladders and step ladders are a means of access only. Whenever you're going to use them, first check that they're in good condition with a valid inspection tag and that they're secured. It's far safer to use a set of podium steps or a scaffold tower that is properly secured. Again, check these before you use them. Apply wheel brakes and outriggers. Use the internal ladder. Don't climb up the outside. When you move the tower, no one should be on it. Whenever possible, access should be by staircases rather than ladders, so it's safe for you to carry your tools up and down. Where this is not possible, tools and materials should be hoisted. When working at height, keep the work area clear and tidy to avoid trip hazards and the risk of things falling on people below. Use a waste chute. Don't throw materials from height. If you're using a cherry picker or mupe, you'll need a safety harness. Clip on to the designated anchor point before you ascend or descend. Follow the safe technique for manual handling. Assess the load. Can you lift it safely? Is the access way clear? Stand close to the load with feet apart to steady yourself. Then lift, using your leg muscles and keeping your back straight. You will have been taught this technique in your manual handling training. If you haven't been trained, ask for training. If the load's at all heavy or awkward, get help from a colleague. Or better still, use a lifting aid. Keep your work area clear, tidy as you go. Stack material neatly. Avoid trailing cables and other trip hazards. Minimize your waste. We'll tell you what disposal facilities we have on site and how waste is managed. We've already looked at some of the things we need to do to protect the environment. Managing waste preventing fuel and chemicals from contaminating watercourses. Turning off engines so we don't waste fuel and disturb local residents more than we have to. But conditions may call for additional measures. Watering to reduce dust, for example. Or wheel washing to stop mud being spread over the local roads. And some sites have particular issues. Protected animals or plants, for example. Or weeds, such as ragwort or Japanese knotweed which need special treatment and disposal, so they don't spread. We'll tell you about any environmental issues on the site before you start work. 
Thank you for watching this induction video. Remember, always stop, think, then act. Let's all go home safely and let's work together to provide an even better service to our customers. Before you go, have a go at this quiz. Record your answers on the sheet we give you.